All right, so today's video is all about doing transforms on the canvas. Now that includes rotations, scaling, and translates. There is a, a general transform method that you can use, which you can provide a matrix for, but I'm going to do a separate video on that one. This video is mostly about rotation, but also about scaling and translating. So I have the background of the page set to gray. I've got the background of the canvas set to white. I've got a little method that I've added to my page down here at the bottom where I'm drawing a grid on the canvas as sort of my background layer. Inside of that, I'm putting these lines every 100 pixels, and they're just light gray lines that I can use as reference. So every one of these squares is 100 by 100 pixels. All right, now that's canvas pixels, not CSS pixels. We can see in here that the canvas width and height is set to 600 wide by 800 tall. And my CSS, I'm using a percentage. So as I adjust the size of the page, it'll change the size of the rendering of the canvas. But internally, it thinks that it's 600 by 800. Okay, so for the transform methods. First one here I've got is translate. I'm going to use that one. So I'm going to uncomment these fields right here and start off with this one. Now my x and y coordinate, I've got a variable for x and y. I'm going to use it for all of these just to have a common reference. So I'm setting it at 100, 100, which would be placing it right here. Now the translate method, what it does is it takes the entire context. So think of it as the contents of the canvas and it is shifting it by 200 in the x direction and 200 in the y direction. So the canvas is being picked up and shifted over 200 and down 200. This point right here, this becomes the brand new 00, zero on the canvas. So my x and y coordinates of 100, 100 are measured away from this point. So 100 over, 100 down. This is where the text is being written. Now that's what translate does. Now, what I've done here with the context translate is I have from this point forward, I have now moved the starting point to right here. I can leave that as long as I'm aware of it and I can build everything based off of that point. This is the new zero zero point. So if I were to come in here and change this text to zero zero as its position instead of 100, 100, there it is. So this is now the new zero, zero. Okay, rotate. I'm going to add another text field on and we're going to do the same sort of thing. I'm going to place this right here at the 100, 100 point. You can see that fill text with the word rotate at 100, 100. Again, away from the translate point. Doesn't matter that I've started a new path. So I've created a new layer here. This, tr this translate still applies until I undo it. And we'll get into that in just a minute. I'm next calling rotate. Now this is going to do the same thing that translate did. It's going to take the whole canvas surface and it's going to rotate it. I'm using pi radians. So this is 3.14 radians that I'm rotating, which is 180 degrees but everything that we do with angles when we're drawing on the canvas, it's all in radians. So I'm saying rotate this, but it doesn't look like it's rotated at all. And that is because this change took place after the text was added. So if I take this one line and I move it up, save it again, here we go. Now it's over here. So it went from here over to here. And that's because this zero, zero point, this brand new zero, zero, this is the point around which we are going to rotate. So the text that was 100, 100 sitting right here has now rotated around that zero, zero point up to here. If I did 90 degrees, so half pi, there it is. It went from this point to here. We're still rotating around this one point. Let's actually, let's add a point there. So in our context, we're going to call the arc command. I want to draw a circle at whatever the zero, zero point is. We'll say the radius, radius is going to be 10 
and our starting angle is zero, our finishing angle is two pi radians, so all the way around the circle. Okay, there is our zero, zero point. This is what we're rotating around. If I hadn't done the translate, this point is gonna be up here. So if I came back in to this one, and I commented out the translate, there we go. There's the point. This text is being written at zero, zero, which means it's written right here, just off the canvas. If I came down, let's see, our text is 30 pixels tall. So I'm moving over 10 and down 30. There we go. There's our text being written 10 pixels over, 30 pixels down. There's the baseline for the text where it's being written. Now my rotate text, it was at 100, 100. So away from the starting point, right here, this is where rotate would have been written. And it's being rotated 90 degrees. So around, it's off the screen right over here. If we did something smaller, let's say 45 degrees. So pi divided by four, there we are. This is the 45 degree point that it's being rotated. So it's being rotated around the context is being rotated and it is being placed at 100 by 100. So 100 X, 100 Y away from that new rotated center point. If we said at zero, zero, there you can see that it's being rotated. It was written up above here and it was rotated 45 degrees around this center point. So the baseline of the text is pointing right here. If I pump up the X value, but not the Y, there we go. Bump it up even further, say 300. So this is now this baseline, the starting point. This is 300 pixels away from the starting point, the point of rotation. We haven't done a translate, so the zero, zero point is right here. My rotation is always gonna be around the zero, zero point of the canvas. When you translate, you move that point from here to here, because that's how much I'm translating it. There we go, everything moved over. So I moved my zero, zero point to here. This is the point around which I'm rotating. My X is 300 away. So we took the whole canvas, we rotated the whole canvas 45 degrees. After this was added, we got to this point, we drew the arc, and then we rotated the canvas. So the canvas got rotated, and then we added some text, 300 pixels in the X direction away from the zero, zero point. Okay, last one here, the scale. So my scale, I did two, two, this is 200% in the X and the Y directions. If I was to say two, four, it's gonna be much bigger stretching in this direction. If we reverse that and put it four in the X direction, you can see it's stretched out in that direction. Most of the time, you're gonna keep things the same for both numbers, or if you want to, you can use something like this. If I did negative one, and one, that would flip it horizontally. So it would take its normal point and flip it along the Y axis. Now you'll notice that this word is also rotated. It's the same thing that happened with the translate. The translate, once we did it, it hung on to the fact that that was translated. So this guy is also translated. Then we did the rotation before we put the text on. Now that rotation applies to everything that happens afterwards, which will include this. Now I've done scale. If I were to add something else, this flip is also going to apply. So how do we get around that? How do we add something, do a transform on it, and then put it back to the way it was, put the canvas back to the way it was so the future elements that are added are not affected? We do that by creating set points. If I do ctx.save, that creates a save point. 
and there will be a stack of them. Every time you call save, it's like a browser history. You're creating this array of save points. Every time we call restore, we step back one save point. Okay. So we did our translate. We added the text. That worked. We translated the point to here. We wrote the text 10 over and 30 down. So there's the word translate. Then we said, you know what? Take this zero, zero point, put it back to where it was. Now on my next one, when I do the rotation, my zero, zero point is back up in the corner. Now this is measuring 300 pixels away from the original zero, zero point. Then the final one here, if we wanted to only do the rotation for this one word and not have it apply to the scale, let's do that again. We can do CTX save. And when we're done, we'll do CTX restore to put it back to the way it was. Now the rotation is not applying to here, but I am flipping it horizontally. If I flip it vertically instead, Uh, let's see, where are we putting this? So we've rotated, we've got our arc, we did the rotation, we put it here, we put it back to the normal. So this is the zero, zero point. Okay, there's our scale. And oh yeah, if I do a horizontal flip, because it's down here, it's going to flip it up above the canvas right here. I don't want to do that this work, what I'm going to do is I'm going to translate as well as scale, just so we can see this mirroring working. I'm going to take the starting point and I'm going to move it over 100 and let's say down 500 to right here. Then I'll do the flip. So CTX translate over 100, down 500. That becomes our new zero, zero point. Now I can do flipping it vertically. There we go. So over 100, down one, two, three, four, five, right there. Then I'm writing this text at the 100, 100 point away from here. That's going to be 100, 100, and I'm going to do the flip. So this is the zero, zero line, and I am flipping it vertically over that line. So from right here, it's flipping up to this point right here. And then again, if you wanted to do something else and you didn't want this flip, this mirroring to take place, again, just wrap this inside of a save and restore. Then you don't have a problem. All right, so I hope that uh, helps you understand how all these transforms work, how the save and restore of the context works, how the positioning works after you do a translate, and how the rotation is going to work. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I will leave a code gist link in the description for this video. And as always, thanks for watching.